Like, hey, let's. I want to be a soldier. Now I can look like a jackass and pretend to be a soldier. Shit, now I'm an actual soldier. I have a squad of multinationals. Nope, they're all dead. Oh, I'm frozen in ice. Well, they didn't all die. Only Bucky died. <laughs> all right. Spoilers. You haven't Listen, seen the original we're, we're Captain at, America. No, no, I, I, see, I was just joking because was it last time or the I time keep before? I flack for that, like, decade-old movies. Are, People are, are like, stop uh, spoiling uh, it. I haven't seen it yet. And I'm like, if you haven't seen it in the last decade, you're probably not going to, and you certainly won't remember what I just said. You are behind, sir or madam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig, let's talk about Jarl. Um... Is Jarl the kind of cleric paladin that, like, where did they learn from? Did they learn from, like, a monastery or a temple? Or did they learn from traveling masters? Or did they literally just, like, pray to Rory and get all the knowledge they need? Um, Jarl was actually taken in by Aurorites um, after the, uh, the uh, abandonment in the desert and uh, was raised in a temple. All right. So, so I, I think I have a scene I want to set there, like a and scene in Kadira. In the past. You ready for this? Yep, yeah, I'm all ready. I'm all ready. So I feel like Jarl, we, we have Jarl, he's like, this might be a couple months ago, so he looks roughly the same as he will when we start. But, you know, he is very prepared. You know, he hasn't been journeying for weeks. He's just been doing his regular temple work. And the leader of this temple, which is called the House of the Thousand Thousand Steps, his name is Sifu, which means, among other things, House Master. Mm -hmm. And he calls you into, like, his private chamber for a tea ceremony. And after the tea ceremony gets underway, it's very ritualized, and it's about an hour and a half long. Towards the end, he finally speaks... Uh, after this tea is served and all of the motions have been gone through, and he says, Ah, Jarl, I have received a request today from certain elements of the Callistian Church. They wish for us to send a great warrior to protect certain members of their clergy. It appears that a multi-faith denomination strike team will be assembled for a operation of great destiny and import and i feel that it is your calling to complete this for some time i have known y'all that you are special that if anyone is to walk the thousand thousand paths it is you you know not just about strength but about wisdom and respect and he takes another sip of tea and kind of just sits there for a while and is is waiting for you to comment like he normally does um Jarl will give it some thought and um say um it sounds as though there is um Sounds as though there is some need for a balancing force. Let me look up Aurori real quick and make sure I'm. Yeah, Aurori knowledge is healing, the god knowledge of, healing, perfection, inner yeah. strength. Yeah, He's the god of self enlightenment and perfection. Yeah, um, if this is the journey that will um, raise my state in Aurori's eyes, then this is what I will do. He says, it is not Aurora's eyes that you need to be concerned about, student. It is your own eyes. The path of self-perfection means not traveling the path that others have walked, but forging your own way. Perhaps you may walk in the footsteps of giants, but on your own, you will create a new path others will follow for generations to come and honor. Much as I have imparted you with much of the knowledge that Irori imparted unto me, perhaps one day you will take on apprentices as well, 
and impart unto them the chain of knowledge, until one day all of humanity has risen once more into Godhood. That is a uh, that is an astounding vision, and I will do everything I can to uh, live up to that goal. That for myself. The, that is the path of one thousand thousand steps. He takes out a letter with his seal on it, and on the front it has your name on it. And he says, "I am giving you this document. When all hope is lost, when you believe that darkness and death stalks you." And you require great wisdom. Open this letter and read its contents. I give oh, wow. this to you for hope of the future. And then he like bows and hands you the letter. Um, I'll take the I'll bow and take the letter and tell him that uh, I I accept this with the uh, gravest responsibility. Go now, travel to the heathen city of Calscott. Be on your guard as you travel, for many will attempt to have you stray from the path of enlightenment while you are there. But you will meet up with one named Elismus. From there you will take a job as a protector of this group and begin your journey down the path with a woman named Ameko Kaijitsu, also known as Ameko Amatatsu. All will be revealed in time. But your destiny and theirs are closely tied together. Very well. Go in I peace. So. And he like finishes off the last of his tea. Okay. He'll uh, pick up the letter, pick up his bag, and walk out and down the road. Yeah, I like the idea that you're already like, like ready to go. Like you, <laughs> Your entire life's Waiting. possession, you carry it Waiting. with you all the time. Every single thing I own is in the uh so what is bag. it that That's you great. owned? Um, Yarl is wearing a uh, mithril breastplate and uh, has a mithril buckler, a frostbite sling, a headband, and um, two ratty-looking uh, ion stones. And that's about the size of it. Holy symbol. I feel like as you're Trail walking. Rations. A few, uh, huh? Trail rations? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's got the the kit the cleric kit but uh yeah that's uh that's about the size of it doesn't have a whole lot of I feel possessions like as you're walking there's a flashback within the flashback but this one is like black and white and it's you when you're like four or five years younger like just whenever you came back from the desert and were nearly dead it's like just after that and you're wearing your mithril breastplate and like practicing your paladin like unarmed fighting strikes against like a test dummy, like ha, shit, ha. And uh, the sifu comes up and is like, <clears throat> "One day you will not require that armor, y'all. One day you will sheathe yourself only in righteousness, for we oh. are luminous beings, not of this crude flesh." And you're, like, remembering that as you set off on your majestic journey thousands of miles away to the north side of the world from the equator. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to not get hit without armor. Okay. I'm all over it. Well, just think, when you're level 20, you won't have to worry about it. <laughs> That's where the three came from. Got it. Uh, does okay. anyone else want to have their introduction flashback next? Anyone got a priority? Hello. I gotta mute that. I don't know what that was. <laughs> oh shit! Kid alert! It's a kid. Do we have I a don't... kid air horn or just a cat air horn? No, we don't have <laughs> no air horn. I, I'm trying. I'm trying not to do that anymore. It's a map. Everybody Hello. says hi. I see him waving. Everybody's waving hi. Wave hi. He's so tiny. <laughs> He's a chucklehead. Anyone want to go next in the? Uh... The operational art of flashbacks. You know, I mentioned my name. Might as well. Yeah, so, Elismus, um, I think we're going to set yours to, like, the day you set out to the far side of the world. All right. So, I think that it begins in, like, a darkened room with a flickering torch, 
and the smell of like burning pitch there's silver powder placed in like a, a sahedron pattern on the ground and it's very clear that this is some sort of like summoning binding ritual you're about to complete <clears throat> mm -hmm. and uh i think he, there's like a, a book casually open like the camera can see the book and it's very obvious that you've made some small but critical mistake in your binding to the audience because they're like so the book is on a table and the camera's at an angle so it can both see the book picture and your actual thing <clears throat> and so when you like cast your magic into the middle of it and summon it green flames start coming out of the silver dust and it's pretty clear that something is going wrong the camera starts shaking you know you're just like putting your hand up to your nose and like ah. So what do you look like while you're doing this? Uh, I look roughly as my picture suggests, uh, mostly white hair with a couple of black streaks, pale skin, spending my time inside all day, spending my time inside all day, and right now I'm looking like, God damn it, I knew the divots need, needed to be on the other side, I just didn't double check. Damn it. Just basically cursing myself at this point. Uh, so, I think that you were attempting to summon. What were you attempting to summon? Let's let's go to that. I was probably attempting to summon a lightning elemental. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So you were attempting to summon a lightning elemental, and uh, what you see trapped inside the circle and like testing its way to get out it's a pillar of smoke that like slowly um forms into the form of a magav a greater host demon devil sorry greater host devil which is far more powerful than anything you can control and it uh. like puts its hand up and you can see like a green barrier forming like a hexagon around its hand and it's like you will not trap me in here forever, Summoner. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Uh, hey, name's Elizmus. Uh, what can I do to you to prob do for you to probably uh, stave off my death for at least a minute or two? So it puts its hand back down to its side and then turns around, stands up straight, and puts its hand behind its both its hands behind its back in like a military pose. And it says, so, you are wise enough to make a deal with a devil. Well, maybe friendly chit-chat at first, and we'll see where that gets us. So it, no. it snaps its fingers, and a scroll drops out of nowhere, and then just hovers in front of you. Alright, what are the contents of this scroll? Yeah, it's, it's written in Infernal. I actually read Infernal. Of course you do. <laughs> and it's it's a scroll for this creature's freedom in exchange for future knowledge. Hmm. Freedom on the material plane or freedom just to... <laughs> Why don't you make a linguistic check? I will certainly... I will gladly do that, actually. Yeah, I feel like it's purposely... The reason I'm asking, it's purposely it's obfuscated leader. because it's a Faustian bargain. Of course it's Faustian. Oh, almost every bargain with the devil is going to be Faustian in nature. Okay. <clears throat> so, while it's... Well, it literally says freedom in exchange for knowledge of the future, the caveats are freedom to return back to the plane it was before for knowledge of the future. Knowledge of the future? Yes. What's the significance of that of? Well, future knowledge can mean you could call upon it later and ask it a question. But knowledge of the future means... It will answer you now with something that will happen. Which, right. as we know in the Pathfinder universe, is nearly impossible to come by because prophecy doesn't work. Usually. I'm going to kind of narrow my eyes at this and say... I'm willing to let you go, but you know the future? That's impossible. Ever since it got aired, the, the prophecy hasn't, hasn't worked. 
So it puts its it turns around and glares toward you and like smiles. It's more like a Dick Cheney smirk, however. And out of the corner of its mouth, it's smirking in like a cloud of smoke comes out. And it puts one claw up and then another claw up and begins like key. What do you call it? Like chalkboard scratching the green wall containing it in here. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> and it's like, what's wrong, summoner? Can't contain your own power. All right, all right. In acts of great destiny, the future can be divined. Well, I may not be one who often trades on such knowledge. I recently came by information pertaining to such things. Information that might include yourself. Your right. very soul could be at risk if you don't listen to what I have to say. All right, I'll take the contract. Uh, I'll look it over one more time. Make sure there isn't any, oh, by the way, your soul is mine clause in there. Seeing none, I'll just be like, yep, sign. Really super straightforward. So the shield comes down, and the devil starts striding towards you. I'll try to maintain my composure. Oh, so good. Can you make a charisma check? I just want to see if you break or not. <laughs> Can I take, is the option to take 10? No, I'm in immediate danger. There's no option to take 10. Yeah, you're, you're under threat. Possible modifier, positive modifier, don't feel me now. Why don't you fucking Craig this, like, uh, skulls and shackles, and just be like, oh, what's up, you needed a 20 for that? Well, guess what? Here's a 20. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, it's an ability check. You, you see him approaching, but you hold your shit together. You, you, you know... You practice in front of a mirror as a summoner. And you're like, okay, occasionally I'm going to do a shit I can't handle. I'm All right. ready. So as he's walking forward, the torch on the wall, you see the flame like come out of the holder. And it's not even like the embers are still there, but the actual fire is like floating toward him through the air and into his mouth. And then he just opens his mouth with the flame there and you hear words coming out. You, you don't understand them. Like, they're just infecting your brain on a mimetic level. And he's okay. transferring information directly to you. You learn during this process, as you're, like, agonizingly holding your face and your shit together, uh, that there will come a time when your path, if you choose it, will cross with others who are destined to defeat a great evil and then travel to fix a great injustice. And that if you don't do this, that injustice is going to grow and eventually sweep through the land that you're in. All right. So where do I need to go? You will have to go to the city of Kalsgard on the far side of the world. As a matter of fact, you happen to know that there's a guide. His name is Ulf Gormunder. And that by the time you reach the city of Aganhe, he will be there for the spring transfer over the top of the world. If you leave just today, you might be able to walk to Aganhe in time to make it to Kalsgard by the next winter. Alright. Well, after the exchange of information, I'm going to thank the con thank the devil for his time and ask if there there's any name he prefers to go by when dealing with mortals and thank him again and he laughs and says you want to know my true name no 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 not your true name just any name you prefer to go by when dealing with mortals i know all about true names and i know how hard they are to come by and how closely guarded they are you can call me firemouth I'll be seeing you again real soon. And, like, he claws at you, and as he claws at you, you can see him ripping the fabric of reality, and his hand passes through you as he transfers over to the, uh, the planes of hell in front of you. Ah, all right. Time to get my stuff together. I start getting booked. <laughs> well, Time to get my stuff over. Let me go pack my bags. Just well, uh, literally just and figuratively. <laughs> Let, let me just uh, empty, empty my bowels real quick. <laughs> I feel like Firemouth is a really compelling character right now. 
Yeah, I'll like write it. his name down. He might show up again. Firemouth, so hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's trending. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag greater host demon. <laughs> uh, those are called Magavs, by the way, for everyone following along at home. They're CR6. So back when, you know, Summoner Elizabeth was a young man, young elf, you know, could could have been a bad deal. Could have been one on one. Yeah. Anybody got a priority over who wants to go next? I will go next. Excellent. Let's do it. Um I think that we come to you in the middle of um like a very burning hot summer's day in some Kadirin shithole with, you know, great white stone marble buildings and such that you could expect on any, you know, transplanted Arabic street. Um, they're all very dirty, haven't been cleaned in some time, you know. Maybe they're less white and more like dusty orange from the sands. And uh, the alleyway you're going into, despite it being burningly bright outside, the alleyway is somehow suspiciously dark. And there is a young woman sitting on the box. Her name is Catherine, and she's one of your contacts in the city, an informant for the Callistrian Intelligence Agency that you work for. The KIA? Wow. Uh, Callistria starts with the C. Oh, right. <laughs> Right, CIA. the CIA. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's a nice try, though. <laughs> <clears throat> so she's a young half-elven woman with, like, shoulder-length red hair who's sitting back, like, really proper, and she has, like, a male folder in her hand, and she's just looking around. She hasn't noticed you yet. She looks kind of nervous, like, squirrely. Super pale, which is very unusual in this climate. And dress like a Taladin, which, again, very unusual. I make sure to sneak up on her to frighten her more. Okay, I don't even think you need to roll for that, because <laughs> you're really good at stealth, I'm guessing. Uh, 15 modifier. So 25. Yeah, yeah. you're good. Um, what do you look like while you're sneaking up? In fact, what do you look like in general? Um, when I'm not... Uh... Stone-faced... Oh. When I'm not stone-faced, I still wear a veil. So I've got, like, um, you know, I look like a pretty stereotypical uh, uh, 1001 Arabian Nights. Uh, Scheherazade. Scheherazade woman, although that's covering, you know, a mithril shirt. Um, gosh, there are four iron stones circling my head, so that won't be a dead giveaway or anything. Um, have maybe you painted them dead black so they don't show up that well. Um, well, they don't glow or anything. Okay. Uh, they're not iron torch things. I just feel like you'd be like hiding behind a box and there'd be like these four stones floating over your head and you'd be like, I don't think they can see me. And some guy would be like, hey, Rock, you see them four stones floating over there over that box? <laughs> Seems <laughs> awfully suspicious. Am I the only one with only one iron stone? <laughs> See, you let people get ion stones in the game, and all of a sudden, it's like they're Pluto. Yeah, they're cheap. It just blows up. It, yeah. yeah, it's the cheap ones that, you know, yeah. All right. Uh, and, of course, I have a rapier and some other stuff uh, as well disguised as I can get them in my clothing, my baggy clothing. And This is uh, a weird question. What does your rapier's handguard look like? Um, it's, uh, it's a grip with one of those, you know, fairly solid, um, the full guard, the bell shape, the, the, how do I put this? Uh, a wide crescent. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and I did send you a token. Oh, um, I'll have to. So did, so did, uh, Craig. Oh, that's going to get squished. It's a lovely token, but it's going to get squished. Mine? Yeah. I'll crop it later. 
Oh, I forgot to make mine square. Crap. I can crop yours while you're doing stories if you want. If you like. I mean, it's not hard, right? Sure. I'm assuming you've got some more story going, so. I hope so. Yeah. While I'm setting these tokens up, tell us more about what you look like or are doing. <laughs> not that I'm distracted by doing that thing that we just talked about. Uh, so, as you can see, my hair is black, and those I can't even make those eyes out right now. Um, They're dark. Dark they're and dark. sultry. Yep. <laughs> I am dark and sultry. Overall. Yep. Interesting. Yep, definitely spy master. And just and to be clear, you are a woman, yes? Yes. Okay. That is a, f yes. Lindra. Indeed. I don't know that we did. With ranks and belly dance. Or yeah. a rank and belly dance. Be. Is there something that um, the people who work for you call you? Is there some title or do they just call you Lindra? Um, hmm. That's a very good question. Um,. They probably call me. Is 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 the blade appropriate for a rapier? Really, because rapier's piercing. Yeah, you could call it a blade. Yeah. Do so okay, you want people I, to call you the blade? Yep. Okay, so <clears throat> Lindra eventually like spots you as you're like right behind her, and no, she's I'm like, a... or not Lindra, uh, Catherine. So she right. jumps and turns around. And she's like, oh, a uh, blade. Yes, I, uh, um, yeah, uh, I had a powwow, uh, we, we, we did some talking, I sang some songs with others of my people, and I, I got the information you asked for. Lower your voice. Of course, yep, yeah, uh-huh, just, we're, we're all friends here, no problem, just We're all alley. friends here, but you never know who might be listening. Yeah, just, nah, <laughs> I don't want to upset you, you know, not that you have any reason to be upset, everything's fine. Nothing has gone wrong. Just here's your reports. As you can see, uh, just the mistress of the temple, Deandrin, just would like to have certain operatives sent to Kalsgard. There's a young woman there who claims that she has a great trial of vengeance to undertake against numerous uh, people, and she's willing to offer a great deal of leeway to the Calistrian temple. Enough that the Calistrians are reactivating the Avengers program, which was <laughs> the multi-faith-based denominational special forces team that was set up years ago. They are even including a wizard of Nethys. Uh, that's how badly they want this. Uh, they were willing to get a wizard of Nethys in order to get the winning bid. And Kalsgaard. She's like, uh, yeah, Kalsgaard, I included a map. And it's in Olfen lands. It's up north. It's very cold. You should dress appropriately. In fact, I included a number of local fashion tips. I know you like the veil, so there's a number of Seath Kona outfits you could take. They've got facial stuff. You would blend in very nicely. You wouldn't stand out. Not that you'd stand out, because you're so good at the disguise and stealth. I just... Please don't hurt me. It's cold in Kalsgaard. I well, hate uh, cold. Uh, maybe you could learn to endure elements. Uh, they're sending a cleric. <laughs> Fair a Vir a Virori, no less. She doesn't know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. You've done your tasks admirably. I will soon be on my way. Okay, all right. Is there some place in the city before you go real quick? Just some place I can get clean with like hot water and soap, a lot of it. The baths, foolish one. Uh, private. Oh, well, if you have extra coin. Uh, yeah. Where would I go? Uh. Uh. There is a bath called torches nearby <laughs> so i feel like I, I know you hesitated verbally but i feel like that was you just like looking in another direction and looking back and being like what what's this what's the chick talking about 
<laughs> She's like, okay, torches. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, I haven't heard of it, but I'm sure it's fine. Just, okay. Uh, you don't need me for anything else, right? And you're definitely not going to kill me? Not today. Okay, Miss Blade. You have fun in Kalsgard with your new friends.